Everything in our Catholic faith is a fulfillment of the Jewish religion. All around our church we find small customs and practices which echo good and holy practices that the Jews held at the time of our Lord. Every one of the seven sacraments can be found mysteriously in the Old Testament. They are all there in a hidden way. God was preparing his then chosen people, the Jews, to become the Catholic Church. He was preparing them to have the seven sacraments, to have baptism, ordination, holy mass, matrimony, anointing of the sick, and to have confession. And it is the sacrament of confession I want to look at today. And that is because we see an example of vocal confession of sins in our Holy Gospel. And we see this before Jesus Christ establishes the sacrament of confession, which, as you know, that happened on the day of his resurrection, when he breathed on the apostles, the first priests, and told them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Those whose sins you retain, they are retained. We discover in today's Holy Gospel that the great crowds of people were making their way out into the desert to meet a nomadic, ascetic, rather tough man, a man we know as St. John the Baptist. They probably just called him the prophet. They knew that he spoke with God's authority and that his life was a perfect model of holiness. They weren't going out to him for counselling or because they wanted him to heal them of some disease or because they wanted him to pray for them to get a good harvest. They went out to him because they wanted to get rid of their sins and they wanted to know that they were truly forgiven. John the last and greatest of the prophets could be found on the far side of the river Jordan and presumably quite close to the shore. I'm sure you can imagine the scene based on different paintings you might have seen over the years. Each person came to him individually and each person would confess their sins to him. They would tell him all the serious sins they had done by number and kind. At that point... He would say some kind of prayer of absolution over them and dunk them down into the water or pour a great amount of water over their head. It was a bit like the sacrament of baptism, but it was more like the sacrament of confession. Going to the prophet John and receiving his absolution and washing did not make you part of God's family. The Jews were already God's children. It didn't take away original sin. The Jews had already had original sin taken from them the eighth day after their birth. For boys and girls, the procedure was quite different. But in either case, from eight days after their birth, they were fully members of God's then chosen people and freed from the stain of original sin. Going out to see the prophet John was entirely about having your sins forgiven, about receiving absolution. That is why the Holy Prophet is so shocked when our Lord and Saviour comes forward because St. John knows that this man is completely without sin, that he is God-made man. The whole of Jerusalem went out to see John. That's what the scripture says. And although I'm sure that must be a bit of a poetic expression, an exaggeration, clearly a really large number of people wanted to take advantage of this chance to have their sins forgiven, to know their sins were forgiven, and to make a fresh start in life. This wasn't the only way of having your sins forgiven in ancient Israel. The more ordinary way was to go to the temple and to tell your sins to the priest. He would then order you to bring a sacrifice as a way of atoning for the sin. So depending on how serious your sins were, you might be asked to bring back some pigeons, chickens, or perhaps even a cow. John's way was clearly a lot easier. And in a very real way, it foreshadows a practice of confession. God was preparing the Jewish people for the sacrament of confession that Jesus Christ would establish when he gave his priests, the twelve apostles, the authority and power to forgive sins in his name. Imagine if Jesus Christ had only given this power and authority to Peter, the first pope. And imagine if he told him that this power was only to be exercised by him and his successors. Imagine that. If the only confession in the world was at St. Peter's Basilica, who can imagine what the queues would be like to get there? You'd probably have to book your slot months in advance, and the Pope would have to spend his entire life locked up 
in the confessional. But all praise to Almighty God. He gave this power to all his Catholic priests. Every validly ordained Catholic priest has this power. And if they're in good standing with the church, they have this authority. And so it is easy for us to have our serious sins forgiven and to receive the grace of the sacrament of confession, which helps us overcome all our faults and failings and weaknesses. All through the Old Testament, God's way of taking away our sins involves us vocalizing those sins. The Jews had to do this in their religion and is something that God carried over into the new covenant, into Christianity. The fact that the Protestant groups do not have confession and do not have priests only proves to show how far their religions are from the teachings of our Lord and how serious a matter it is for them to join the one holy Catholic Church. Back to John the Baptist. Why were the Jews going out to confess to the great prophet? It wasn't simply because they were sinners. It wasn't simply because going to the prophet was easier and less expensive than using the temple. They went out to him because of his preaching, because he was telling them, prepare the way for the Lord. He was saying, your Savior is coming very soon. Your Messiah is coming very soon. And if you want to meet him and to be a member of his new kingdom, you need to leave behind your sins. And that is why we have this reading in Advent. As we prepare to celebrate anew the coming of our Saviour, and as we prepare for his second coming at the end of time. But it is also, and this is the last point I want to make, and the most important, we have this reading right now to help us think more carefully about receiving Jesus in Holy Communion, which is also a coming of our Lord into our lives. Holy Communion should not be automatic. I think that is a big problem, a huge problem in our church today. Holy Communion should not be automatic. Communion should only come after confession. Now, I'm not saying that you have to go to confession every time, but every time you receive communion. But I am saying, and the church is teaching, that Holy Communion can only be received by those who have been to confession recently enough to know that they are free from mortal sin. Going out to see John, the great prophet, and confessing your sins to him was direct and immediate preparation to meet the Messiah and to join his kingdom. Using the sacrament of confession, that is direct and immediate preparation to meet the Messiah and to receive him physically inside of you in Holy Communion. And the frightening thing is, if you haven't made this preparation, and if you just receive Holy Communion out of a routine, or knowing that you need to go to confession, or that it's been years, years of sins since your last confession, then that Holy Communion does not bring you closer to God. It is what the church calls a sacrilegious communion. It's a further sin against our holy God. Every holy mass is meeting the Lord and every holy communion is an opportunity for an incredible and unparalleled intimacy with our Lord. And so it's something we need to prepare for. And we do that by making sure we are free from all, all, from all mortal sins and we are living according to the marriage teachings of our Lord. Do not despair if you're falling short of this. The Lord is still very glad that you are here at Holy Mass and simply being here and offering God the worship he deserves will bring you immense graces and blessings in your life. He's very glad that you are here and that you honour him and that you worship him in a very, very holy and a devout way by not receiving Holy Communion. That is, if you are not properly prepared. Even better, Prepare yourself well. Receive Holy Communion with great profit by a good confession. We thank God for the opportunity to go to confession. The ease of going to confession. The certainty of having our sins forgiven. But we thank him even more for his real presence with us in Holy Communion at every Holy Mass. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.